thank you for uh, joining this evening's uh, webinar. So welcome to this evening's webinar on edge computing in enterprise energy management systems. Uh, while all of us are aware, uh, uh, convention and energy is is predominantly a, a depleting resource, right? And uh, with the digital transformation taking a big leap, uh, energy is one of the most critical component uh, for its success. And whenever we're talking about a critical component, which happens to be depleting resource, uh, there is a strong need or, or there is a, a a fundamental need a particular resource uh, and uh, edge computing uh, which is a distributed computing architecture uh, in my opinion is at a state where the cloud computing was uh, around eight years back the edge computing model is, is something uh, at least based on what we are seeing around is, is spreading its tentacles almost every area of the business economics and technology so how, how can we use edge computing to uh, manage uh, enterprise and energy systems, right? How can we use edge computing to manage uh, how the energy is consumed, how energy is recharged, how energy is, is if, if it's not being properly used uh, in, in a large scale enterprise is what uh, we, we're gonna see uh, in today's webinar. So here uh, we have lined up uh, two excellent speakers uh, who are the experts in the area of uh, energy management systems and edge computing. Uh, before I give a, a brief introduction uh, about the speaker, I'm happy to say that uh, this event has been technically supported by uh, IEEE Computational Intelligence System as well. Uh, so to start with, uh, first we have uh, Mr. Madhusudan Gangadreya, who is working with uh, GreenCube Technologies as uh, an engineering manager in his present role. He's responsible for uh, engineering deliverables, uh, the software and hardware uh, at GreenCube Technologies uh, company. So prior to GreenCube, uh, he was uh, working in automotive industry uh, with around 15 years of exper experience uh, in the areas of uh, embedded systems and, and automotive software. Uh, so before uh, GreenCube Technologies, uh, Mr. Madhusudan has spent his time in uh, companies like Bosch, uh, Delphi Automotive Systems, and others. Uh, Mr. Madhusudan has a bachelor degree in engineering from uh, VTU University. And moving on, uh, the second speaker uh, in today's webinar is Mr. Siddharth Manod, uh, who is the COO of uh, Acon Labs. Siddharth has around uh, 13 years of experience in uh, sales, business development, uh, and customer engagement, uh, and as well as in engineering. Uh, he has a strong technical knowledge in uh, edge computing, IoT, em embedded systems. Before Icon Labs, uh, Siddharth was CEO of uh, PyNet, an offline content distribution system. Before that, uh, he used to work at Cisco Systems uh, in the areas of IP protocol and switchings and uh, service provider routers. Siddharth has a BTEC degree uh, from uh, IIIT Allahabad. Here, uh, I would welcome uh, both the speakers on board, uh, as well as uh, all the people who are joined to hear from these two speakers. Uh, over to you, Mr. Thank you, Chetan, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Please let me know if you can uh, see my screen. Yes, Mr. Masoon, you can see your screen. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, um, I, I think uh, you need to swap the display. I think you're seeing uh, speaker content. As, ah, yeah, this one, right. Thank you. Just a minute. This is good. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay, is it still the same? Uh, you get to see the speaker view also? Yeah, it's still the same. Okay, no problem. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so as part of uh, energy management systems, uh, today I will uh, briefly walk through about what is an energy management system and why uh, we use these in our uh, products. Um, so I intend to uh, have this uh, as my agenda topics. Uh, um, first, I'll talk briefly about uh, my organization, Green Cubes Technology. And then uh, we'll get into the details of about the types of cells and what chemistries that uh, we use. Uh, why we need a BMS, uh, what does a BMS do, uh, how is our BMS uh, IoT enabled, is it a connected device, and what are the challenges that we see today uh, when we have these connected devices. So uh, a short introduction of Green Cubes. Uh, so we are a, a company who has been an expertise in uh, uh, manufacturing and uh, delivering uh, lithium power systems. So our power systems are all uh, backed with uh, lithium uh, cells and batteries. Uh, we have been doing this for now about 20 plus years uh, and we have been catering uh, to a wide uh, spectrum of uh, industry. Um, so our equipments uh, or the power systems um, are going into OEMs and also to enterprise uh, customers who are uh, working in the fields of uh, uh, warehouses and distribution, airports, ground support logic, uh, logistics, uh, medical industry. Uh, these are the kind of uh, uh, industries where we have been uh, applicating our uh, products. We are about 300 plus uh, employees uh, spread across the world. The headquarters being in uh, Indiana uh, in uh, US and the other centers are spread in uh, the different parts of the world, uh, starting from Switzerland, India, Malaysia, and Taiwan. So uh, this is a short overview of uh, our organization. So coming to a little more specifics uh, about the cells in chemistry. So in any uh, power system, which are powered by a battery, the very basic building block is a cell. A collection of cells arranged in a certain configuration, uh, which is in our terminology, a series and parallel combination, uh, um, aggregates into a battery. And uh, how these batteries operate and how are they controlled, uh, we will talk in detail as we go on. So when it comes to uh, cells or a battery, uh, we have uh, mostly uh, come across uh, lead acid or nickel cadmium, and uh, now the latest rage is with uh, lithium, uh, lithium ion cells or lithium ion batteries. So if we look at uh, predominantly the lead acid uh, was considered, to, uh, considered as a easy solution uh, to build a battery to cater to a, a very high demand of power. And uh, this is what was being used uh, in the industry uh, where such uh, applications uh, was required. And uh, over a period of time, uh, things have evolved and lithium ion uh, has taken over the lead acid applications. And to just give a comparison of uh, the various characteristics of a lithium ion versus a lead acid. Uh, here is a short summary of uh, these two chemistries. And if you uh, look at some of the uh, distinguishing points, uh, the energy density of a, a lithium ion is much higher when compared to a lead acid. It gives you more uh, life in terms of the number of cycles that we can achieve. Uh, of course, uh, this is just the starting point and as the quality or the uh, build is improved, the life cycle also improves. 
you can also deliver uh, uh, much uh, higher uh, current rates during uh, demands of the load. It has a, a better operating uh, temperature uh, and it is also uh, manageable to a certain extent. Uh, uh, without uh, thermal management, you can see it can do a 10 to 35 degree wide operation. And the self discharge of a lithium ion when compared to a lead acid is also very less. Uh, it's less than 2% per month at a room temperature. And there are other factors uh, uh, below here in terms of uh, the uh, deep discharge, over dis overcharge, short circuit, and cell balancing. I'll talk about this uh, in the subsequent slide, uh, but this was just a, a snippet of uh, what has changed between a lead acid and a lithium ion and uh, why uh, we kind of uh, inclined towards lithium ion uh, chemistry to uh, power our equipments. Uh, when it comes to lithium ion, so uh, lithium is one of the raw materials uh, that is used uh, in uh, in, a chem in a combination with other metal oxides. So the metal oxides can be of uh, different uh, metals which are tabulated here. Uh, so it can be a, a nickel metal cobalt combination. It can just be a nickel cobalt and aluminium or a uh, with a magnesium oxide or a, a, a lithium iron phosphate combination or as, as simple as the latest uh, being the lithium titanium oxide. So all these are different chemistries that are available today. And uh, uh, from uh, uh, if you look at the uh, various uh, parameters here listed, uh, all of them would have a, a nominal voltage of about 3.2 or 3.6 voltage with an exception uh, coming from the LTO, uh, which is at 2.2. And uh, higher, energy, higher energy densities would be available with uh, uh, NMC kind of cell. And when it uh, comes to uh, durability, the lithium uh, titanium oxide is more durable in comparison to others. And uh, other uh, important factor that is always considered is the safety, uh, where uh, lithium is kind of very highly sensitive and volatile metal lithium ion. So, um, with different combinations of these metal oxide, the levels of safety also increase or decrease. Uh, predominantly, LFP is considered as a very uh, stable build uh, with a good performance and uh, um, safe also. So uh, these are the different chemistries that are available today. And we mostly uh, deal with an LFP or an NMC kind of chemistry. Uh, with our uh, applications. So uh, having uh, known uh, the advantages in comparison to a uh, lead acid and different chemistries, uh, there are different form factors uh, that are available. Uh, the first one is called as a pouch. So this is, this is how it would look and they would uh, uh, have a capacity of up to uh, 100 ampere hours, uh, where the uh, enclosure material is typically a uh, polymer bag. And for the building from the cell to a battery, uh, we need to connect the terminals with a bus bar, which is typically uh, uh, done with a laser welding or an ultrasound welding. And next is the cylindrical cells. Uh, I think these are more uh, famous uh, because of Tesla. Uh, these also come up uh, with a capacity of up to 30 ampere hours and with a build that is typically a steel uh, can when it is insulated. And for interconnecting the cells, uh, we typically do a, a resistance or a laser welding uh, uh, methods to uh, build a pack. The last ones are the prismatic ones, which are with much higher uh, capacity. Uh, these look like uh, cuboids or uh, like a novel. 
and uh, they come up to uh, 200 ampere hours of capacity and their enclosures are usually plastic or uh, aluminum or steel and here uh, you can either go for a welding or you could do uh, just into the interconnections with a uh, bus bars using uh, a simple fasteners which can be hand taught so the ease of build is more with a prismatic when compared to uh, the other form factors so um so why do we need a bms or a battery management system uh, why do we need to manage a battery or a cell uh, we'll get into this topic so if uh, if we reflect back on the table uh, that was uh, showcased earlier uh, these three properties that is uh, or the behavior of uh, a lithium ion battery under a deep discharge and over overcharge short circuit Uh, it's very uh, sensitive for these kind of situations where uh, it is it cannot tolerate or it cannot recover from uh, such a scenario where it is stressed uh, either because of the uh, demand from the system or for temperature and these cells also need to be constantly balanced so that we can get an optimal output so with these factors Uh, which are influencing to ensure that we get the uh, uh, maximum out of a lithium uh, powered uh, uh, system uh, as i said so these are the sensitive parts the voltage and current requirements and because of this a very common failure that happens is the separator uh, which uh, isolates the anode and cathode within the cell uh, this fails and this leads to a very violent reaction and in uh, many cases and it leads to an explosion so to avoid such things uh, we need a bms and uh, as i said it is also sensitive to temperature uh, the bms uh, also takes care of either heating or cooling so that the whole uh, pack temperature is maintained at a certain uh, operating an acceptable uh, threshold uh, so that the uh, behavior is good so we increase the efficiency with the B, uh, bms and uh, by using a bms in a lithium uh, powered uh, device uh, we overcome the above risk of uh, that could arise from temperature or an abusive usage and the whole uh, system along with the user is protected and of course we extend the life of the battery so these are the reasons uh, why we look at of uh, having a bms uh, with a lithium ion uh, battery pack so uh, what are the different uh, building blocks or the functional blocks in a bms so the bms is basically uh, an uh, electronic uh, device uh which uh monitors various parameters of the battery uh it senses the uh battery voltage it senses the uh cell voltage it senses the cell temperature and it takes uh, reasonable actions to uh ensure that it is operating in a safe uh, zone it is able to uh protect the device and also capture some information for further evaluation so in the bms so we have uh, afe uh, which is called the analog uh, front end so this is the uh, module which uh, reads the analog parameters basically the cell voltage and the temperature uh, it processes this and passes it on to the microcontroller and the afe also has an additional job of uh, uh, doing the cell balancing so uh, in uh, lithium powered uh, uh, battery packs the cell balancing is a little important um because uh, if one cell is not working or is not at the same level as the other cells in the whole pack it will have the tendency to pull down the whole uh, battery packs performance and uh, uh, make it uh, less efficient as the days go by 
so the balancing uh, is triggered by the uh, bms uh, via the afe uh, based on some uh, algorithms and uh, typically uh, there are two types of uh, balancing that is available uh, passive and active so passive balancing in simple terms would mean uh, to uh, uh, discharge the energy or the extra uh, energy that is available in the cell that is that is having more when compared to others so it basically brings down uh, this additional uh, uh, capacity uh, in comparison to the remaining cells in case of active balancing the same energy is diverted to the other cells where the capacities are uh, less or the charge is less and uh, we also read the uh, current and voltage from the whole pack for the controller and what happens in the controller uh, is something uh, in the battery industry called as uh, fuel gauging uh, where the algorithms would uh, read these parameters uh, evaluate and uh, come up with uh, different uh, um, uh, data like the state of charge state of health determine the states in which it is operating and what action uh, should be taken uh, either as a precaution or to turn on the loads or off uh, such things are handled by the microcontroller so the microcontroller uh, uh, does all the processing and there are these other peripherals which are available today uh, for example this is the bdu uh, which is basically a collection of mosfets uh, and it is called as the battery disconnect unit so this is uh, connected uh, uh, to the load or to the charger and based on the operating conditions it enables or disables uh, or rather connects or disconnects the uh, load or the charger so it is acting like a, a safety uh, a mechanism while operating and this bdu is uh, okay or it is a right uh, component to be used when the uh, current requirements are uh, less uh, instead of bdu you can also use a contactor which can handle uh, these are all solid state uh, uh, relays which can handle more current so the controller also uh, has the uh, capability along with the dpios uh, to control a fan or a heater this is basically used for uh, thermal management uh, accept some inputs uh, in case of the mobility uh, uh, applications and ignition is taken as an input and we also have uh, communication mechanisms uh, available uh, with the external world so you can uh, connect it to the pc via usb or you could use uh, rs232 or 485 in, uh, for any industrial applications and we also have uh, can channels in the bms uh, which can be used to network with uh, uh, the vehicle or you can also you uh, use this for um, connecting with the chargers which are also communicating on can the bms also will have uh, onboard data storage so all the data that is read and uh, some amount of the uh, afe uh, some amount of the fuel gauging uh, data is also stored here at um, uh, more uh, frequent interval which can later be read back and used for uh, analysis or evaluations um, having said that bms has uh, what it reads and what it does and how it is controlling the uh, external world it also has uh, wireless communication modules uh, these uh, are with uh, uh, Wi-Fi module and also uh, Bluetooth. So once we have uh, the wireless modules enabled, so this uh, takes us to the next level where uh, we can connect our devices to the cloud. So that's when that's where we get into the connected BMS. So. Uh, when it comes to uh, connected BMS, uh, so the BMS on these uh, end uh, applications 
is reading the data, it's processing uh, some information and taking certain actions. And the same data is also published into the cloud uh, through an MQTT protocol, which is later uh, accessible on our uh, web platform where you can see the raw data, you can see some uh, analytics done and which is also published. There are also alerts which would come uh, in the web application based on this uh, data that is available. So uh, how is uh, uh, a connected device uh, helping us and what value would does it add to our customers? So uh, being a sensitive system, uh, it is always under constant supervision where you can remotely see uh, various uh, data points, uh, voltage, current, temperature, state of charge, and so on. Uh, you can monitor for each cell, for the whole pack. Uh, all this is possible. And with all this data, uh, when it comes to an enterprise application, uh, we can see what are the usage patterns that these devices are undergoing? Uh, how can their life be extend, extended? Are there any uh, service requirements that we can foresee or it has to be addressed now? Can we find devices uh, where they are located? One of the main, uh, main uh, uh, concerns or motivation for any enterprise uh, customer is how to increase the fleet utilization. Basically, they don't want the devices to be uh, sitting idle. They want to ensure that they are used to the uh, maximum they know when it has to be charged, when it can be aligned with uh, a break or a scheduled uh, uh, lunch break of these uh, uh, operators who use the uh, devices. And what kind of uh, energy savings are possible uh, with the uh, battery powered systems, uh, which are powered by uh, lithium, lithium ion. Uh, device security basically uh, means that these are uh, landlocked to a particular uh, location, a certain area uh, beyond which they will be disabled uh, if they leave uh, the facility. It will also help us as a, a manufacturer, as OEM of BMS and the battery pack uh, in uh, doing warranty analysis. Uh, it would also help in updating uh, remotely the configuration of the uh, system and also to a certain level of uh, troubleshooting. So this is how the connected devices uh, help us and also our uh, customers. Uh, being connected didn't mean end of the world or ease of things. So uh, it has uh, its own challenges. The very basic being uh, network connectivity so there is connectivity available in the fields where it is applicated, uh, but sometimes we see that the network goes down and that leads to uh, data loss. So we are not able to evaluate what is happening. Is there something critical that needs attention now? And <clears throat> so with this, the remote access of the devices also sometimes is a challenge and uh, updating software uh, remotely, uh, even though we have network connectivity, sometimes it doesn't uh, allow us to do a, a proper uh, software update because of many issues. Uh, how many, uh, what was the total uptime of the device uh, and what are the factors that are driving these, driving the uptime of the device? So these are the challenges uh, that we see uh, as of today. And uh, to overcome uh, these issues, uh, we are also looking into uh, edge computing uh, in our uh, systems. Uh, basically, it would uh, uh, like edge uh, would do some amount of uh, data processing at the compute uh, device level and uh, uh, send us uh, uh, filtered information or in some cases also take action. Uh, so that the whole system is uh, uh, kept in a working condition or it is safe. Uh, once the edge computing is uh, implemented, so it would also do the uh, in-house uh, decisions, uh, which means at the endpoint and not at the cloud. 
and uh, bandwidth has always been a concern uh, where the amount of data that keeps uh, uh, pumping into the cloud is not always uh, uh, feasible with the bandwidth that would be available. So with an edge computer uh, device or the endpoint, we can uh, buffer the information and we can later process it to send it to the cloud uh, when the load on the bandwidth or when the load on the network is uh, less. And this would also mean uh, that the uh, power demand on the source is also less, uh, meaning to say the, uh, the uh, IoT uh, gateways or the devices, these are also powered by the same batteries. So we also tend to reduce the demand when the computing is in-house, I mean, on the edge. And uh, we only uh, do the selective transmission of information. And of course, it can also help us in uh, uh, doing smart alerts to uh, the end user at the site and also to the uh, application on the web. So uh, having seen uh, what is BMS and how we are enabling it with uh, Internet of Things and how Edge is also helping us to uh, overcome some of the challenges that we have. I now uh, uh, request uh, Siddharth to talk more on the Edge computing uh, solutions. Okay. Over to you, Siddharth. Hey, thanks, thanks, Madhu. Uh, it was very, very, very insightful. Uh, uh, definitely, I also learned a lot from the session regarding batteries, the cells, and what exactly goes into a BMS. It's, it's definitely enlightening for me as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. I, without taking much time, I'll start uh, uh, presenting my screen. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, yes, it does. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Great. So now, uh, since Madhu has spoken about uh, what is BMS, what is connected BMS, definitely the challenges of connected BMS. Uh, what is the role of edge computing in BMS? I'll I'll, I'll walk you through uh, what exactly uh, does it mean to solve those challenges that Madhu spoke about, and how to enable edge computing so that it definitely brings an ROI on the whole system. Uh, how to how to manage a fleet. Prominently. So if you see here, right, uh, 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 on the left-hand side of my screen, uh, that's a typical uh, IoT or uh, edge systems being deployed on field, right? A completely open to environment, uh, no, as Madhu said, right? Connectivity is definitely an issue. Power you might be getting from these systems itself, but yeah, it's, it's open to environment. So what are the challenges in this IoT edge system? So it's, it's a multi-vendor system. Uh, uh, the, the gateway, the edge gateways from some other vendor, the PMS, the uh, control units, ECUs are from some other vendors. And then you have different sensor nodes and all of them coming from all together different vendor. The network is from different vendor. It's a multi-vendor system, which makes it difficult to manage from a single point of view. Uh, there's no IT staff to monitor. Maybe in case of uh, uh, BMS sites, there might be IT staff, but also that, that would be staff from the enterprise side, not from the site uh, from the enterprise who's deploying it, or not from the same case of GCT, not from the Green Cubes technology. So no IT staff to monitor these deployments. Are, are, are they working, not working? What is the state of them? And then as, as, as Madhu also said, right, network issues are a big, big challenge. They are remotely deployed. You can't send your staff every time to these sites. And uh, uh, it's it's a problem here to manage these devices. Now, talking about specifically on the BMS side, right? So this is how it works up. So the the, the topology, how the the BMSs would be connected to a edge module would be something like this. Uh, there could be uh, more than seven to eight BMS up to I'm guessing up to fifteen to twenty BMS can connect to edge module. Uh, definitely. And, and that's where the edge module collects the data, helps manage the complete ecosystem of these BMS and the edge module itself. Uh, doing doing so, sort of uh, application management, application running, processing the data on time, sending the data back to the cloud is being done by the complete edge module itself. Once connected to BMS, the connectivity is mostly through uh, wireless, is mostly wireless. 
Now, what are the challenges? Will be the same challenges as what Madhu spoke about. We talk about remote debugging, remote debugging of both the BMS sites and then also on the edge computing sites. How do you reliably upgrade the firmware or the configurations of these edge devices, of these BMS devices if required? Uh, how do you find out which one are up? down uh, why are they down the device uptime the network uptime of these devices do you you you, you do a fleet management in a single site itself right you could see one uh, one edge compute module can support up to 10 to 15 bms site right? you're talking about multiple hundreds and thousands of these sites itself how do you do a fleet management of these uh, bms modules and also the edge gateways the applications running on them the network part of it uh, all of them becomes a uh, uh, task. Now, uh, uh, doing application monitoring, as I've already mentioned, and peripheral monitoring is another thing. So not only monitoring the edge modules, but also the BMS part is, uh, uh, is also required. Uh, the, the upgrades of these BMS as well, the configuration changes in these BMS is also required uh, based on the requirement from the end customers. Now, what is ICON? Now, we spoke about the challenges, we spoke about the problem. What is ICON? ICON, in a nutshell, it's a software solution to monitor, manage, securely access, and upgrade remotely deployed uh, IoT devices and edge applications. We, we work across the horizon of edge computing, starting with gateways, edge servers, robotic arms, connected vehicles. You talk about uh, smart retail, smart vending machines, surveillance, uh, image processing, computer vision, machine vision, drones. All of them are classic examples of edge computing, where the data which was previously on cloud is being now uh, processed at the edge itself. The applications are being running on the edge itself, and they are not simple applications. They might be complex as well. So if you see in all of these uh, use cases, right, what is unique across these use cases is hardware and applications. Like in case of BMS, the hardware is definitely Definitely a unique hardware. You have an edge computing module, and then you have these microcontrollers, the BMS modules, which are connected to it. And then what are the applications? As Madhu mentioned here, right? The applications which they would be running is to gather the voltage data, the temperature data, and other very specific parameters related to BMS, and then maybe process them on the edge. So these could be applications. In a connected vehicle, the application could be um, navigating from point A to point B. In a surveillance system, the application could be a uh, doing a number plate detection. So these are some sort of unique things in, a, in any edge, edge computing uh, module, which are use case, which I discussed about. Now, what is very common in, in all of them? Once deployed on field, everyone has to make sure of privacy and security. You have to make sure that you are able to remotely connect to the device debug problems efficiently. You are able to monitor devices, applications, and networks all together. And at the end, upgrades to a deployments to a firmware upgrades, application upgrades at the end is what is required. And that's what the common part is I can take care of. So that for you to start or deploy any of your applications from the cloud to edge after deciding on the right hardware becomes super, super easy. Now, how does it help uh, DevOps engineer? And it'll be the same, I'm guessing, for all these edge computing uh, use cases which I spoke about, right? On daily basis, you have to, you might have to do more and more deployments. So Madhu and team would be doing more and more deployments of these BMS sites, right? They have to monitor the one which are existing. They have to operate on the one which are uh, uh, deployed on field. Maybe do configuration changes, restart them if things are not working well, if network is not working well, diagnose and debug the problem, and then at the end, create the reports to find out what exactly is happening out of 100 sites, uh, 80 are in good health, 20 are not in good health, why are they not in good health? Sort of reports which are being have to be created around this. And how does ICON helps in all of them is doing a complete all their upgrades, helping them with each of these modules which they spoke about, right? Monitoring of the applications, devices, do a container deployments if required, Docker deployments, remotely access and debug issues, reports and analysis, what uh, we help them with. So how does it all work, right? If you see here the same diagram, what we do, we uh, it's a very simple deployment which we ask for, a, a, a software agent which will be deployed on these edge computing modules. Now these edge computing modules could be anything and everything running Linux or open Android. Uh, and these uh, uh, software agents, the icon software agents can be deployed on any, any of these uh, Linux running or Android running devices. Uh, one which is similar, uh, what, what GCT or GreenCubes is also running, Matu team is also running. Right? So once we deploy these agents on these devices, right, that's where the agents helps them to control the edge devices from the cloud, helps you to control, manage the network, manage the applications, uh, remotely debug the problems and all of them. 
So if you wish, you can also try it out at experience.icon.io. I'll just very quickly take you to the demo uh, of what is being done. Yeah. So you could see here, that's what our uh, demo platform is, uh, site is. Um, um, so once these agents are deployed, right, this is something like this. Uh, you, you see uh, the dashboard, something like this. Out of 35 devices, right, 24 are connected, 11 are down. You could find the location. The profiles of these devices. So these profiles are completely virtual profiles, right? Um, could be based on the geography, based on your end customers, based on the applications you are running or, or, or virtually anything. And these are the applications which are end customers or enterprises, then, right? Uh, going inside each of these bricks, you could see what are the devices, the one which are up, down. Uh, the one which are up, you could see you can directly and remotely connect via browser itself. This this help many enterprises like what uh, Beam Cubes and all of them to debug and access the devices remotely with a single click, even behind a net or a firewall. Uh, going inside. So, and, and uh, one very useful thing, right? These tags, which are completely programmable and configurable, these tags uh, uh, helps you to uh, uh, essentially filter out the right and relevant devices from hundreds and thousands of your fleet of devices. Say, I want a device which is in Bangalore and running X version of my application. These configurable and programmable tags will help me to filter them and then specifically putting them into a dynamic group. So you could check out uh, going inside the device, what sort of device it is, the different interfaces it's exposing to. We are talking about the edge computing device here itself, uh, what interface it's being exposed to, uh, the specific uh, uptime of this device, when was it up, when was it down, why was it down? So today is 5th of uh, uh, May, you could say. Each break is one hour here. Uh, going, we could see here on 18, the device went down at around 10, 30 p.m., uh, finding out what exactly happened, right? So uh, as mentioned, right, uh, a complete diagnostics of the system is being done by the controller itself. Applications were fine, network is fine. There were issues with the system. The system was under voltage, you could see here, and the details will also be here. So uh, a level of diagnostics uh, is being already done uh, for your edge computing devices placed remotely, and which will help you to find out what, what's going down and what's loading down the uptime of the devices. The same will come into the events as well. So what are the events if you could see the same uh, devices under low voltage and the processes which are working, crashing and all of them. You have a complete visualization of all the CPU, memory, data, network usage. Now, uh, what, what is very useful for uh, enterprises like uh, Green Cubes is the data consumption, the network speeds, how are they working? So uh, how, how, how is the network all well or not? Because that's, that's the connectivity is one of the major culprit uh, in, in, uh, in these edge computing sites. And then apart from this is where we have the complete business telemetry where anything can be sent from the device securely from the device to the cloud and then being uh, showcased on the cloud to the dashboard itself. Uh, that's one thing by, by simple APIs itself. Talking about the logs, you can gather any sort of logs, uh, whichever it is, uh, application log system logs and all of them, you can consider add new logs. If you see here, I've already added these three logs. So you can add more logs, just pass on the path file of the logs and then the logs will be monitored here. Similarly, you can start monitoring your processes as well. I've started monitoring CNC. You can start whatever process you want by just naming the process here, right? Once you name within a few minutes itself, the process will start, will be started monitoring from the cloud. Again, going back, right? Here it is, I mentioned like the CNC process is being monitored closely. Now, if in cases, so the, the, the complexity of the whole edge computing uh, uh, infrastructure is the application. So applications is the core and the heart of these edge computing devices. If your applications are not running or are behaving abnormally, that's where you lose uh, multiple data points or you lose the actual uh, 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 use case itself. So that, that's where doing the process monitoring, application monitoring is very essential and we have added that. You can check out what are the each, uh, the, the specific resource consumption by each of your applications here as well. Right. Uh, uh, if, if there are applications which are dockerized, the, the same will come up here. The Docker applications, you can monitor them. Uh, uh, the other top processes which are taking uh, CPU and memory are also mentioned here, so you could see. Uh, then this is again, very essential part of it, right? As we said, we don't only monitor the 
edge devices, but also the connected BMSs. I mentioned it here in this diagram, right? Uh, though our agents, which are software agents, can only be deployed on Linux devices, definitely can't be deployed on a microcontrol devices. From the neighbors is where you can essentially manage and control them. So you could see all the connected devices uh, in the same network to this uh, edge device will be coming up here. And though the agents cannot be installed, we can remotely debug, we can remotely configure them, upgrade them through this infrastructure. So you could see, right, this is a TP-Link router in the same network, even though the agents are not deployed here. Uh, I can quickly open the, let's see. Yeah, maybe the, 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 the router went offline or something. Yeah, so essentially all your BMSs, which are also in the in the same network, right, will come up here. Yeah, here it is. And so similarly, like how I'm I'm able to open the control panel of uh, these the, the router, the same way is where you can open the control panel of the connected. BMS uh, to the edge computing site or any other modules or any other peripherals which are also connected to this uh, edge devices and control them or upgrade them if required. Right? Uh, we have a complete reporting section. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing the reporting of scale test devices, CPU and this. Be sorry for this. Very strange. Uh, let, me, let me go to some other site. Okay. I'm sorry, actually, the site doesn't have a active uh, devices here. Uh, let's check again if the test is coming up or not. It seems that some, some issues is going on. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the same thing reporting, you can create here reports itself. So, if you want to see uh, what are the uh, devices which are up, and say, I want all the edge devices reports uh, which were. Uh, I want to check the device uptime. Though since the devices are down, I won't get anything. They say last month. Yeah, you could see some of the devices were up. Uh, they recently went down. Uh, in last month, four devices, I could check the reports. For each day report, how much time they were up, all will be coming up here. So then you can export these reports directly to the, uh, uh, as in CSV file, and then send it out to. You can deploy containers, as I mentioned, right? Uh, create an application, create a, uh, uh, just just give us a Docker Compose file to the dashboard and then that's where uh, it sits as a play store, it works as a play store for your Docker applications. Go to any profile where you want to upgrade these uh, or uh, install these Docker applications or container applications uh, going there. Yeah, uh, it's already running in Nginx. I can then deploy it and then deploy whatever uh, containers or uh, uh, Dockers which I want to do that. Events I spoke about over there upgrades are also very essential. Now you can upgrade virtually everything on these over there upgrade, uh, through over there upgrades. So essentially, starting from data files, you can upgrade uh, uh, scripts, your configurations, uh, do a complete firmware upgrade, uh, um, upgrades of your applications, native applications, or, or maybe if it's an Android device, an APK. Uh, what essentially is required is to give us an artifact file, a package of your application, essentially, or package of whatever you want to upgrade, and then do a deployment. I'll just do maybe last one. one. Yeah, so okay, cool. So you could see I've done a deployment on two devices. One got skipped, one got successful. It took me to 42 seconds. The one which got skipped is because it, the, the the particular installation was already updated so i've updated a artifact which was demo artifact 
the other one which was successful essentially when you are doing an upgrade upgrade of maybe the bms firmware or upgrade of the edge device or applications which are running right you'll have a complete control of or a complete view of uh, how many upgrades how many devices got updated if they failed why they failed you can do multiple retries on these devices which which makes it pretty pretty clear for the enterprises to know of what state are the upgrades went into so yeah this is pretty much it uh, what we have to offer from uh, essentially what how we can help you to manage any of your edge computing devices including definitely bms or or any other sites uh, running or use cases uh, of edge computing uh, maybe send stop sharing yeah chetan over to you yeah uh, thank you uh, thank you siddharth uh, and, and also uh, thank you madhusudan uh, for the wonderful uh, presentation both of you made uh, this evening i'm pretty sure this uh, is is going to be you know uh, an interesting topic for all the audience who are present here and uh, so on a wednesday evening we all learned something good thanks for that uh, so uh, while i i jump on to the next section of uh, question answers i would again uh, like to say like i would like to thank uh, ieee uh, computation intelligence society uh, for technical support for this particular webinar thank you so uh, before we we jump on to the questions from the audience uh, uh, of course uh, both are actually questions from the audience uh, we had few questions from the audience during the registration process itself we'll probably first take that up and then subsequently we'll keep the floor open for uh, anybody else to ask questions so uh, the questions i'm just asking in the order in which i just received uh, so first question is uh, do we have a metric breakdown for edge versus cloud computed data uh so maybe uh, siddharth you want to take a stab at it um i'm i'm, I'm guessing madhu should be taking it because i'm uh, this is regarding uh, bms data right uh no this is general uh, edge versus cloud okay if it's uh, edge versus cloud yes uh, so uh, whatever applications you are processing on that say in case of bms right if you talk about uh, voltage data or temperature data definitely if the temperature is being constant to 27 degree right you don't want to send it to the cloud every time only when there are changes in this data is where you wish to send that data on the cloud uh, the rest still it has to be processed on the edge itself so those sort of data which uh, aren't required necessary to create either intelligent models on the cloud should be sent to the cloud and in case of bms the data which has to uh, which which can be processed or which has to be processed on the edge uh, can be essentially processed uh, locally itself and need not to send if there are no changes or if that's not being required for the uh, to to Uh, sort of create any models or learnings on the cloud hey uh, thanks that and by the way uh, audience uh, please feel free to uh, put your questions on the chat window uh, and just take it up uh, and as well uh, uh, thanks uh, siddharth for uh, answering this and then uh, i just like to uh, add upon a little bit on that based on my views as well so in in terms of actual metrics on uh, what data being processed by cloud and what data being processed by edge uh, of course uh, the metrics typically comes uh, from various uh, research organization and uh, the gartner uh, has actually uh, at least uh, predicted by the year 2025 75% of the enterprise data will be processed outside the cloud uh, on the edge uh, that is uh, to the uh, <clears throat> that's one fourth of the data will only be processed in the cloud and three fourth will be processed on the edge and uh, maybe currently uh, we should see uh, somewhere close to 20 25% of the data that will be processed on the edge and then rest of it actually in the cloud and that's something trend that's changing towards edge based on uh, gartner thank you uh, so i have a second question here uh, so let us know more on analytics involved on the uh, dynamic data generated from the bms so so basically uh, the the person here wants to understand what kind of analytics do we do on the data generated uh, for the bms and he wants to uh, relate that to uh, other use cases as well uh, so once if somebody could explain what happens the bms he wants to relate to other options so uh, uh, mr madhu can you take this up uh, so they want to know what kind of analytics are involved on the dynamic data generated on a bms um in 
the uh, analytics uh, so uh, with the data that is available we uh, look at uh, uh, how the system is behaving is it in the safe zone uh, how is the energy consumption vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the energy that is uh, consumed from the grid versus what has been uh, um, used for the application uh, what kind of errors are there which are critical? Uh, should they be attended immediately or to something that can be put out for the future improvements of the system? Uh, so these are the things that we do today. And uh, uh, I would say the uh, analytics for every uh, application uh, will be different. It cannot be a generalized uh, statement or a requirement that would uh, cater to all possible uh, uh, um, uh, domains or application. And uh, of course, we also look into how it is being used. Uh, is it like a normal usage? Is it an abusive? Uh, do we need to do some changes so that uh, the operating uh, can also be more uh, smooth for the uh, end application. So all this are the parts that we do in terms of analytics. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have an, uh, another question here. Uh, how is enterprise BMS different from EV, that's electrical vehicle BMS? So again, probably uh, I would request Madhu to take it up. Um, in my opinion, the uh, basic functionality in an enterprise BMS or in uh, automotive uh, EV uh, remains the same. So functionally, they all would be doing the same. Uh, but I think uh, the automotive uh, would demand more uh, safety, more uh, secure operations because the there are legislations and there are uh, standards which are uh, pushing towards uh, safety. And uh, in an EV, uh, range anxiety is a very uh, uh, valid concern because today we can just get into a petrol bunk and in five minutes we are done, we are full. But uh, with the EV, how do we get this? So the range is a more uh, concern. And uh, for enterprise, uh, it is more to do with like a durability vis a vis an EV application. So I think this is how we look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we, we have an, uh, another question here, uh, so specifically on over the air firmware upgrade. So uh, the question is, what about man in the middle attack? Uh, can someone not hijack the process of over the air up firmware upgrade? Uh, maybe uh, so that. Could yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Sure. Thank, 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 thank. So yeah, definitely. Uh, 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 the over there upgrades which I mentioned or I showcased on the uh, uh, to the icon, icon platform is all through uh, 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 SSL channel through HTTPS, which has been taken care. We are also trying to see how we can make it more secured or perform the over up, the air upgrades uh, using the uh, the secure obtained standards which are there for vehicles which are completely secure and uh, making sure that the middle middleman attacks are not being take, uh, being done. Now, uh, to, to do that, as I said, right, it's been already being used, uh, being followed through a proper HTTPS channel. And uh, there are certain uh, criteria which are being checked before and after sending or after the package is being downloaded onto the site. There is definitely a proper checksum which is being maintained and then being checked whether the checksum is matching and all those things. And, and subsequently, other certificate so uh, the certificate based authentication is also done with respect to the uh, the the file which is going uh, back to the device for upgrade thank you Sita. Uh, so we have uh, one more question from the audience uh, so question is other than temperature what are the factor affecting the safety reliability and life of battery modules uh, please brief on the energy demand scenarios and an effect of discharge uh, and charge resulting in thermal reliability issues. Uh, maybe Madhusudan, could you please help us out on that? Um, the other factors uh, for safety and reliability is mainly the uh, uh, current and uh, voltage demand that is either pumped in or extracted from the uh, battery pack. So if you're trying to pump in uh, too much of energy, that is a safety concern. And also it reduces the uh, life of the battery pack. 
similarly while uh, discharging over currents uh, and under voltage i mean you try to go below a specified threshold uh, out of the uh, safe zone uh, this also has an effect on the uh, safety as well as on the reliability uh, the other part was uh, uh, energy demands uh, okay this uh, to a certain extent is also uh, we need to uh, look at what is the application what kind of demand uh, the application is asking for and based on that we also do our uh, selections for the cell so earlier in our uh, presentation we mentioned of the different cell chemistries and uh, these cell chemistries uh, also help us to uh, handle uh, different type of chargings uh, different type of discharge uh, requirements so that is how we uh, handle the energy demand scenarios okay uh, thank you so uh, we have another question uh, question is uh, does the payload to the cloud has to be dynamic based on the edge computing so maybe uh, so that uh, you can take it up uh, payload to the cloud yeah maybe dynamic based on the the processing which the application is doing if it is not required to send the data if you uh, as i mentioned earlier right if you're not doing any sort of analytics on the cloud uh, if it's not being used to learn uh, or create models on the cloud yes the payload uh, uh, of the data itself which can be sent or the frequency of the data sent also can change or vary based on uh, uh, the, the the set itself or based on what you are trying to achieve. So as I said, right, if the temperature is always 27, right, uh, uh, maybe you only need to send it when it's, once it's 29 or 30, the, the, the data uh, set, because it has changed and the reason for the, the change itself. So yes, it can be dynamic uh, based on the situations, based on the applications you are running on the cloud. On the edge device, sorry. Thank you, Sina. Uh, so we have another question. Uh, what is the purpose of uh, CAN in the, in the BMS systems? Uh, is it for communication to get the status of the cells? Or is it got something more than that? Um, no, it's uh, not just for that. But uh, in uh, cases where it is being used with uh, uh, mobility devices, the controller, the motor controller, can also communicate with the BMS on CAN. And uh, yes, for charging also, the charges all uh, communicate on CAN and our BMS is uh, also smart enough to say uh, how much of uh, power, I mean, the voltage and current that is required to charge the pack in its current condition. Okay, oh, that's great, thank you. Uh, so another question. Uh, uh, can can someone uh, masquerade uh, and send some fictitious data to the cloud? So how do we protect this from happening? Uh, so maybe see that can take it up. Uh, you see, it is definitely possible to send uh, fictitious data to the cloud, right? Depending on um, uh, what, what are the um, um, so if, if 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 the device is completely open uh, to communicate with any sort of cloud, and it's 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 easy to install your applications or easy to uh, hack the data, you can send it to the cloud. But uh, for the same reason, right, there are ways in which you can white label or whitelist the, the, the specific uh, IPs on these devices or on your maybe uh, uh, the uh, firewall, which is that, which is there on the network. You can essentially specify which, uh, which clouds it has to talk to. You can very, con very constantly monitor the applications which are running uh, uh, on these devices, which are either accessing the data or sending it to the cloud. And then uh, accordingly take an action. Uh, uh, action. If you find uh, the, the data is being accessed by an uh, anonymous application, which is not by from, uh, which is not a part of your infrastructure definitely you can try to uh, take actions based on it or uh, try to stop sending the data going to a, a ip which is of uh, which is not trusted uh, altogether or have secure uh, essentially as i said right uh, certificate based authentication to all the servers which you want to send data only to yeah so there are ways to stop it but uh, absolutely the, uh, uh, if the security is not in place uh, we can masquerade the data from uh, to from the to to send it to cloud yeah Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks. I think uh, we, we are out of all the questions and as well as uh, 
we are three minutes, uh, sorry, six minutes on top of the hour. Uh, uh, and uh, I would like to uh, again thank uh, both the speakers, Mr. Siddharth and Mr. Sudan, uh, as well as uh, IEEE Com Computational uh, Intelligence Society. Uh, we have Dr. Vijay Kumar also from the uh, IEEE Com Computational Intelligence Society. Uh, thanks for providing technical support for this particular talk. Uh, so have a nice uh, weekend. Sorry, have a nice uh, evening. Uh, thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Bye.